Bottasini. <laughs> Bottasini is the name um, of a composer that most bass players will recognize pretty quickly. Bottasini wrote a lot of great music for the double bass between his concerto, um, the show pieces like the Grand Duo or the um, La Sonambula, or um, there's even, and I should know this one y'all, I think it's like variations, um, variations on on Norma or something like that. Can someone, it's called this. That's what it's called. See, that's what it's called. Anyway, <laughs> or maybe it's there. That's what it's called. <laughs> but yeah, I should know know his, his um, uh, that piece better for sure, for obvious reasons. But, and I, if I said concerto, I meant to say concerti, because he did write at least two. And I think the only reason that he, he knew he wrote two is because the one that's most famous is the second one. <laughs> so I could only assume that there's a first one, that, particularly when I was younger. Uh, but the first concert is actually really, really nice, um, uh, really nice piece of music. Uh, so, but Bodicini is one of the, um, uh, the grandfathers of, <laughs> of, of our repertoire. For those who like to make fun of the double bass, yes, he's like one of our four major composers who wrote for <laughs> the double bass. But it's for a good reason that he's remembered because the concerto is actually really, really nice. There's some really, really nice, the second concerto uh, is really nice and there's some nice components in it that I, I look forward to talking about. In thinking about Bottasini, there are a few things I want to discuss. One is Bottasini, and y'all, I'm not a historian, so this is just basic knowledge. Bottasini was a composer, so yeah, you got that. Uh, Bottasini uh, apparently was a virtuoso bass player, so you got that. Think of him like the Paganini of the double bass. That's what I, that's the way I like to think of him because his music is very virtuosic. As a quick aside, if you start looking at his music, it actually really lies well for the double bass. It's not like hard and for, for like other crazy reasons. It actually fits well under the hand, and it's actually nice to have music that. It's that showy and it actually makes sense. Anyway, that's, a, that's an aside. So he was a composer, bass player. Uh, one of the other things you may not know about Bottasini is like another uh, bass player and composer, Bottasini was a conductor. <laughs> and my understanding is that his specialty was opera. Um, can you think of any other bass composer uh, players who were also conductors? Kutsevitsky um, was the music director, for those of you who don't know, of the Boston Symphony Orchestra, and one of his claims to fame. He knew a lot of the great uh, composers of that day, and one of the, his great, came, great claims to fame is uh, Kutsevitsky actually um, commissioned, and I believe did the premiere for the Bartok Concerto for Orchestra. So there you have it, bass players making history all the time. So uh, Bodicini, so he conducted opera, and this is important because opera is very specific. Um, and further, it's Italian opera. Bottasini was Italian. So this, this Italian opera, this concept of um, Italian music, and I start thinking of um, some of the other great Italian um, opera composers and how, if I look at Bottasini's music, how much of his, his own experience affected how he wrote his music and how he wanted his music to be performed. So that has me diving even deeper uh, into this Bodicini. Now, I can't believe I'm showing you this because this is my original music, literally my original music from who knows when I bought this, maybe when I was in high school. It's seen better days. Um, I've since had this copy, um, and this is not the version I use anymore, but this is the first page of my original uh, Bodicini music. Yes. Yes, I think it probably ended up in the bottom of a book bag a few times. <laughs> I'm all, I was known particularly in high school and college for carrying a book bag that basically had all my books in it. Because, you know, if you carry all your books, then you can't forget any of them. Like, duh. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, this is it. So, I start to look at the music with all this knowledge in my head. And I see um, it says string bass. Good. There's other something else that's written on the music. It says solo tuning. Huh? Solo tuning? What does that mean? Well, if you're a bass player, you might already know this. If you don't, I hope you're sitting down. <laughs> uh, because a lot of the solo pieces for our repertoire are written score to tour or written in a different tuning. So 
the top string, so solo tuning for the double bass raises all the strings up by one whole step. So your G becomes an A, your D becomes an E, your A becomes a B, and your E becomes an F sharp string. Yes, an F sharp string actually exists. It exists on the double bass when we play. Uh, I generally hate solo tuning. Now, when I was younger, I think I did like it because it is, the strings are thinner, the pitches are higher. That's always fun. But particularly as I went through college and my ear got better, like my brain, it's just very difficult to know that I'm playing a B natural in my head and then have it come out as um, like a C sharp. Because <laughs> that would be a whole step. Or a D natural in my head and it's coming out as an E. That's always messed with me. Um, and unfortunately, we're the only string instrument that really has to deal with this because um, of course the violin, viola, or cello, they do not change their strings to different strings and different pitches when they perform. So that's something we have to get to, used to as bass players. So there's that. There's, there, there's that. The other thing the, about solo tuning, about the strings, they're generally brighter and allow the bass to project more. That is a really, really great added benefit. However, when I play lots, and I've played lots of concertos, I've only played one recital in my life, yes, one recital in my life, <laughs> uh, and I, but I've played many concertos with many different orchestras, and I normally like to play um, amplified, meaning I like having a microphone, meaning I like to not have to belt it out the entire time just to be heard. And um, my one recording of this piece uh, was on Spotify and it was even on YouTube and I've had a hard time finding it and if we do find it I'll put it in the in the um, in the comments is my thoughts on the recording I mean, it is with the Chamber Orchestra of Philadelphia they're great that was wonderful Michael Stern was the conductor all great all wonderful the thing about it about that might get a little minor about the recording is I was not amplified for that it was performed in the Perlman Theater, which is one of the three main halls in the Kimmel Center for the Performing Arts. It's the Verizon Hall, where the Philadelphia Orchestra performs. I was not amplified, and whew, even with a piece that's written in a way, because I th there's a string version of that, uh, is, uh, it's still it's still hard to really project. And I think it's unfair that bass players have to work so hard to project that then it's really hard for us to be subtle and have the same subtleties and the same nuances as the violin or cello if they're performing. So, y'all, it's not like I'm mic and it's not like I have an amp next to the bass and I'm blasting people away. Generally, with the microphone, most people don't even realize that the bass is mic. That little little bit generally helps just enough so that I don't have to like really really struggle. But anyway, that's my my thoughts on on. Um, playing amplified versus not. But going back to Bottasini and the concerto. Bottasini, if I start to look at this, he gave us information. And if I start to look at the information, it says, okay, string bass, good, that's the right instrument. We talked about solo tuning, good. But then the next thing we see, common time, 4-4, four, four. I can handle that. And then the next thing we see is um, allegro, moderato, Wait, huh? Allegro what? Moderato? Wait, that's that's strange. Huh. Cause I thought the boss scene show D da 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 D da D da 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 D da 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 I mean I it's it's and it's very exciting that way. But this moderato, it's like he's like, oh hold on, hold your horses. Something maybe a little bit less than that. Y'all, this is my interpretation. Not fully allegro. It's something a little bit more um, uh, held back with this moderato marking, which is very interesting because um, uh, there, there are many different approaches to the concerto. Y'all, at the end of the day, you, you, as an artist, you can do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> uh, but again, I like to use this information so that informs how I play it. The next thing is, um, is this dynamic marking. It says piano. Wait, ain't this supposed to be a concerto? Wait, this says concerto? Yeah, it says concerto. Piano, moderato. So immediately, with the knowledge that I have that Bottasini wrote for opera, he was a conductor, I start to then think about what might this be if it itself 
were like an aria or a selection from an opera. And it really starts to change how I approach the piece. Let me explain. <laughs> so if I were to look at this, uh, the opening of this concert. So, and well, the other neat thing is this editor, I've always started an upbow in my, in my, ever since college. I don't, I don't think I always did. I think I always started a downbow. But I, I do it for, uh, uh, if I I just always like to put that end up on a, on a downbow and I can, that, that was just a personal preference. Even though, phrasing wise, it takes away a little bit from the, the phrasing. Because that's, that's a goal. But be, also because it's in piano, I feel like I don't really have to scoot the bow to do that. And what do we have? What do you hear? So it's in piano and he writes this, this room. Da 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 that's a little artistic license. Da, 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 dee, da, da, dee, ya, dee, da, da, So you could play that. That's exactly what's on the page. But y'all, what is the page? What is this? It's paper. And paper that's, again, seen better days. This one does not last much longer. But it's just paper. So we, music, is a way for, the, this is the only connection that we have from Mr. Bodicini the only connection that we have to what he had in his head on how he wanted this to go. The nuances, you can't write them in. We've, if you've watched my YouTube videos, you know a lot of the nuances we must know. And again, I'm already talking about some of the things I'm considering and thinking about when looking at the composer. Like, um, he was an opera conductor, played the bass, but the opera is the most important thing for me here. So if I were to approach this as a singer, would a singer again, they could do that. And that, it, could, it could be perfectly great. My approach is if I were to sing this as, a, as an opera singer, and I start to think about the key of the piece, it's an A minor or e, B minor. You, you know what, you catch my drift. Um, this minor key, D, and this opening. I'm sorry, you want an up bow. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the music becomes way more melancholic or um, reflective or reminiscent, almost like a, some, some kind of memory looking back, the, uh, da, dee, da, da, dee. particularly with the piano marking. That's, the, I mean, yo, this is, the, I'm, I'm getting all this from what I see on the page and then thinking about him being um, a, a, a singer. And if I were a singer, there would probably be more nuance. Dee, ba, da, dee, da, dee, dee, da, da, dee, da, dee, da, da, ya, da, dee. That to me is the phrase. That, because y'all, music, for me, music becomes words. Literally, music becomes speech. When music becomes speech, it's as powerful as words. And honestly, for me, it's more powerful than words. Because what we have, in connection with that speech is the harmony, the counterpoint, and the color developed by the composer. That to me, now we're really actually, we're creating something. And when we can transfer these notes into being something greater than just the notes on the page, then we go from performer to becoming an artist. That's so important. All, I mean, that's the thing. It's almost like an, like, like a, um, uh, uh, um, like an artist, <laughs> a visual art, a painter. 
Like they, they have these tools, they have this, but what makes the art is how they use those tools to create this beautiful picture on a canvas. We the musicians are given tools, the musicians, we are given tools. We are given tools to play, like a bow or a bass, or you, um, uh, we got the music and the notes on the page, and um, we have our knowledge of bowings and fingerings and all these things, and, te and technique and arpeggios and scales. Those are all of our tools in, 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 in making for the best performance possible. But we use those tools to create art. That is your job as a musician. That is your job as an artist. And I know at a young age it's hard to, it could be difficult to see the music in that way, but for me, again speaking for myself, is honestly like the only way I could see music. Because <laughs> I was always looking for a way to express, because that's what music is. So instead of looking at this, I mean, of course, we have to learn play it in tune. We have to learn the right notes. We have Those things are all really, 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 really important. But we have to leave the page and actually become an artist when we perform. Now, like, what does that mean? Because you, I mean, I, I bring that up and that could be very confusing for, for some of you. Well, again, like I said, the music on the page tells only part of the story. We create the art. So what, how might I be able to phrase that in a way that could be a little bit more compelling for the mood that Bodicini has set up with this, this da, da, di, 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 di. It's very, <laughs> the music is, so, is, is already very kind of like a question mark and it has, it has you um, uh, um, kind of guessing what, what might be coming next. Do I say da dum bum 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 do saying something very very different because this to me is a little more lonely something a little more um, a little more sad and a little yeah it's just lonely it's like just this and melancholic is the word I used before <sighs> It's, I, it's rubato. I don't just play it, but I actually grow to that because that to me is where we're, where we're musically going. So I really make sure. So I, anything can do that, which is to me a lot different from da 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 di da da. Very kind of straight laced. <laughs> Another thing you notice is like if this long note is an opportunity, you've heard me say that before. So so every note means something and is going somewhere. And then we have this little more. Uh, and really enjoying these phrases and these lines. I think it's really, really important to think about, to kind of take this approach to all, this approach to all the music that we play and thinking of ways we can always best serve the composer and also serve our instrument. So in this video we discussed already like the fact that I don't like to play as many concertos that I've played I don't like to play uh, without, a, without a microphone because I think it's not fair if I don't because then I'm working so hard to do it. And I know I'm pretty puny. You could say I, sh I should lift some weights. Maybe if I lift, lifted some weights I could be stronger and play but I don't, I don't, I, <laughs> that's not, that's not my, my thought process. My thought process is how can I be just as nimble as a player as, as, um, uh, as I want to when I'm performing. So that's one. Two, the other, um, uh, and if, maybe I'll even do a video about that. The, the equipment I've used uh, and in my concerto experiences that work really well with the orchestra. I mean, 
I think I said it before, I, I, it's not, it's so subtle that a lot of people don't realize, most people don't realize that the bass is even might. But that little extra something goes a long way in the house um, uh, for bass performance. So those, that's my just two cents. And then the, the last thing is, of course, is the most important part for me is really um, using the technique to become the artist that we want to be. I always say, one of my biggest things is, uh, my biggest, uh, how can I say, my, bi my biggest handicap, that's what it is, my biggest handicap as a musician is the fact that I play the double bass. Because um, what I have in my heart and my soul is the purest form of the music that I want to make. And the double bass just happens to be the medium that I use to get that music and get that expression out. So that's my, that, that is my um, uh, incentive to practice. That is my incentive to learn scales. That is my in incentive to play arpeggios and do other technical exercises so that I can best take what I have inside of me and present that to the world artistically. And that approach to music making is something I would highly recommend highly recommend because <laughs> when you're searching for music it's like the journey never ends if you're searching for technique for me and maybe and this i'm speaking for myself if you're searching for if i'm searching let me say those words if i'm searching for technique i i never feel fulfilled it's almost like reading reading about chemistry instead of actually being in the lab and during the, doing the experiments that's the difference so it's, it's, it's taking all that knowledge of chemistry, all that knowledge of music, and using it to actually create the, the, um, the magic or the artistic product, product. We are so fortunate as artists to be able to do that. And uh, I'll end on this note. There are a lot of students who ask me about that. And for me, the music part has always been easy but it was only enhanced by learning more of the technique that would allow me to be even more of an artist. When I say technique, it's the approaches on the instrument, but it's also the approaches to the music. So, and the, the, the context of the harmony and the counterpoint and these things, the more I learn about those things, the more of an artist I'm able to be because I'm completely informed on what I need to create the music that I want to create. So in all of your endeavors as a musician, <laughs> start to figure out what are all these technical aspects that make the music work. And trust me, the more you know, the further you'll go. <laughs> that was like an, an education ad from the 80s. But now that I understand how phrases work, now that I understand how harmony works, now that, now that I understand how um, uh, there are elements in the music, these uh, motivic elements that one should be listening for and how does a composer play with that to be able to tell the story that they want to tell. Once I knew that, then all of a sudden the music started making more sense. And y'all, it's kind of a love-hate relationship because it's one of those things, it's nice ha being having that reckless abandon as an 18-year-old, just like, I know everything and I can take on the world. Um, and sometimes it's harder. The more you know, it could be harder because you're almost more distracted by all of these wonderful elements that make the music work. But at the end of the day, it's a, an endless pursuit for this, for this un, or intangible thing that we are, we are um, aspiring, to, aspiring towards. So as many of you, I don't know where you are in your music journey, but I can tell you that it will always be an exciting one and one that will always bring solace and peace and joy to your heart <laughs> the more the more that you understand it so i'm going to end on that note i will pick this up on another day and this could be the end of the whole 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 segment and um hope you enjoyed this video there'll be more playing in the next one i promise <laughs>